Hello. So, I'm going to go get some wood, and then I'll be right back. Please let me know what how the stream is doing, though, because I think I have some connection issues. I'll be right back. Well, I'm uploading at like, I think 13 or 1,000. Uh. Well, I'm on Wi Fi, so let's see if I can change that on the fly. Let's see if that changes anything. I don't know. 4K upload. Can't do a 4K upload with Wi Fi. How is this? Is it doing better or is it doing worse now? How is it? Too many controls. Too many controls. Okay, so, so is it... Well, it's, it only says it dropped like 1% of the frames, and dropping 1% frame, that's not bad. Can, can you hear me fine when I'm away? Like when I'm this distance? Like this is close, about 2 feet. This is far away, like, I don't know, it's like 8 feet here. Let me know about that. So, I took three more trips to the dumpster last night, and I got some more wood. It has that paper stuff on it. It'll clean up really well. Weird, it's like a... It sprays off really well. <clears throat> Sorry. It sprays off really well, but it's hard to pick off. I imagine it's probably something that they put on it before they put flooring above it, just to um, make it quieter. But that'll come off easy when I spray. But what I want to do is I want to save the nails. Because the nails actually aren't that bad. And, well, they're square nails too. So that's nice. They're square nails.
days, I'm going to put a magnet on my hammer. And then it's going to collect everything I don't want, and then I'll take it back off. But for a while, it'll be good. Sunlight. So, we have some square nails, which are very nice square nails. Very good condition. Some of them aren't even rusty. Although, I will say, where they go through this wood, they're dry. Well, sorry, no. Where they go through this wood, they don't have any rust on them, and they look brand new. But on the bottom part, they're all rusty. So top part looks like it's been sandblast. The top and bottom part looks all rusty and I have a tendency to close a snap. So I'm thinking whatever subflooring was underneath this, which actually I think I might have a section of that, subflooring was the barrier between the moist basement, which that basement was very wet. And it makes sense. It's just, it's just it's very odd to find nails that are consistently heavily rusted on one side and then not rusted at all on the other. So since I took off the uh, oh and yes I have gloves because these are really dirty. I don't know what it is on here, but I think it's a mixture of of like mouse shit and so much other junk. Probably some like sulfur from coal burning or whatever. But whenever I was practicing with the, the line level, I bought a line level for the the workshop project because what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll put a string around the top and then that'll tell me where to cut. And so I'm practicing making sure I can get it as level as possible. And I found that square nails are actually really good for that. Sebastian suggested soaking the nails in vinegar. Um, honestly, I'll just use my friend John's sandblaster, and the sandblaster will do more than enough. But at the end of the day, I don't think it will matter that much. Now, my plans for this are... I now want to save the nails, because square nails actually are kind of nice. I found that it was really... For something about them, they're just really easy to tack in. And then... They're really, really strong. Like, amazingly strong. If it was a round nail when I tried to pull it out, it would bend, but... Citric acid? I guess citric acid would work. But, the one thing I'm thinking is, I'm wanting to reuse this wood, and I'm thinking, there's already holes that fit these nails perfectly, so whenever I'm putting these boards back down, I might as well reuse these nails, because... Nails are so reusable. Some of them are, I've already reused like four times. Oh, and Omega Man suggesting to get a nail gun. Don't need a nail gun when you have a hammer. It's so much better just to do that. I'm going to find something to put these things in. Oh, I, I want to share with you guys something I found. There's this brand of root beer called Dang, That's Good. <laughs> That's an odd name, but it actually is really good. This is Butterscotch Root Beer. It's like, I think it's locally made. Yeah, but it's Dang with an exclamation point. That's good. www.dangthatsgood.com I don't know anything about it. Bottle in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Interesting. It just tastes very good. Can't quite place the, the flavor. Oh yeah, I, I do have a question. So how does it handle the wind noise? Does, does he have much wind noise?
Oh, and yeah, this is a pretty bad hammer. I found this in the bushes when I was mowing. It's kind of become like my outside hammer that I just kind of leave outside. Now something like this, I'm not sure if that would sand very well. It's uh, looks like it's coming up. It is straight though. That is good. So I think something like this would not be very, it would not lend itself very well to a floor for the loft because, I mean, I guess I could have like a rug up there, but I want to have the nicest, smoothest pieces for the loft. This would probably go for the uh, like shelves or boxes. Like I think it would make a really good toolbox. Make a nice little old fashioned wooden toolbox and use this stuff because it links together. It's nice and strong. While I'm doing this, I should go ahead and start setting it aside into different grades. So, over here is the good side, and then over here is the more lumbery side. That one's another lumber one, plus it's already disintegrating. Actually, nail nippers would not work very well because the heads are too big on these. After all, these nails are from the 1890s. Great, but this is missing this entire piece of the uh, the, the uh, groove, like the entire wall here. So that's not very nice. But if I ever wanted to do it upside down, then we actually have a nice surface. So I don't know. Like I could go right side up, or I could flip them all upside down and just resand them and turn the bottom into a section. I don't know. This might be a bad one too. A lot of round round nails. Round nails in these ones. He's blowing all the shit onto me. The wind's going that way. I don't want to see it. a lot of bad boards on this run looks like but they have good nails well okay not never mind nails are pretty rusty too although I don't know that that groove that groove actually is kind of nice looking I like it You know what? I bet somebody will probably buy these if I put them in the antique shop. Because people just jump all over like barn wood and stuff. Didn't really have my phone on the laptop. Well, dust we're dealing with. Like, is this dust in here or what? I think that is. Oh, God. <laughs> 125 years of just junk. 
it's a very, very thick. Oh. It's like a good laptop, but oh well. Yeah, I'm going to deal with that later. Now they are all just full of junk in the... Oh, there we go. You can really see it. The structure and integrity of these aren't that great. The other boards seem nicer though, so that's good. I do kind of hate gloves. Sixteen oh five suggestion to do a pass me to a planer is a good idea. Oh, and by the way, these square nails are punched nails, so they're from the late 1800. They're not handmade. I punch from a piece of sheet metal. I'm going to get a pair of pliers. Give it a shot. What do you think I should do? Should I use sandpaper, a plane, or what? 
Well, by the way, this is an 1870s fence wire thing. Better, a little better. Donation? Your super chat? Odd. Oh. Interesting. I didn't see that. 20. What is that? What kind of currency is that? Looks cool. Those are really deep ridges. Let's try the plane on the bottom side. How about that? I'm not very experienced with it, but whatever. That smells nice. Very nice. So, um, I think you're doing a pretty good job. I've never sharpened my, uh, I never sharpened this thing before, though. At least I think you have to sharpen them. Be a bit curved, so I'll lower the blade a little bit. <coughs> no, that's not right.
not that bad. That's pretty good. It's a lot better than this side. So this side is still really rough. There's splinters from that, but this side actually isn't too bad. So Crispy Kleenex asks about the rockets. Well, not working on the rockets yet until I get my workshop done because cunning to have a workshop for rocketry. Skinny. 1982, though. So, yeah, that's kind of, um, I just put it in the, uh, just the lumber section. Don't even need a hammer. Forgot these things work as hammers, too. Have I ever shown you guys this tool before? I don't know if I have. So, I'm not going to get any work done if I keep showing you my tools. So this was a tool that was in my great-grandfather's stuff. I think he found it in his yard. My great-grandfather's yard used to be a dump, so he found so many cool things. And that's why I think these are actually pretty old. Plus, because they were really pitted. And I think you've had these since the 50s, so they were really rusted even in the 1950s. But they're a little pick. You can uh, grab stuff with them. They're for like making for wire fences. A little hammer for putting the nails in the fence. And you can have a series of crimpers and cutters. I believe two different sizes right there. Or, uh, they're the same size. You can see like right through here. I guess one thing I have to worry about is making sure these actually fit together well enough. So, do the boards have to fit together like 100% or or what, you know? Oh, that one's kind of curved. And that one's pretty straight. Never mind. together so that's another problem yeah, that's as close as they'll go I'm not sure if that's good or not I do 
Nothing that's good enough. Maybe these ones would be better not for flooring. It's kind of all over the place. But those longer sections probably would be okay. Have to fill it with new schmoo. I don't think that it was supposed to have stuff in it, you know. Like, I don't think it's very, I do, I do not think it was customary to fill the cracks with like a glue or anything. There's a nail in here, that's why. I don't think that nail is going to come out. Oh, there's little nails. It's not a very good board. Some of this stuff will just be firewood because it's just got broken nails and stuff in it. Even that one probably is just firewood. Everything is just getting covered in all this shit. You look at all the shit on there. I'm sure you can see it, but... It's obvious that these actually haven't been used. No one's actually walked on them in a long time. I hate round nails. Or could it be that the round nails have more grip because they're newer? Like maybe they were out in the 1950s, and so they haven't had that extra 65 years to, to get stuck or to, to loosen up around it. I don't know. Round nails suck. Here's another part that I'm not really sure about, like this. When they ripped it up, they obviously ripped that.
I don't know if this piece is even really worth saving, because, like, well, for floorboards, I mean, like, if I really was desperate for wood, at this point, I'd probably just look for another building to salvage stuff from. So this section, or sorry, no, this, um, this trailer load was the last one that I got, but it's still on the trailer, and the other one of those I went for, um, longer sections, so I think the longer sections would be the better ones, like that one. So this, it might just be that this low, because I, I went towards shorter sections, it might just be that this one's a, kind of a dud. We are getting a lot of nails, though, so that's good. I like this nail, this round nail. That's that's not going to survive. Survive. Now that's stuck inside there. But it's been drying. It's been drying for under 25 years, so it'll burn pretty well. Omnipotent said that you can always rip the tongue and groove off the board. That is true. But the tongue and groove actually is quite nice to have. Shooting 120, um, I shoot 120 film on my Ecoflex camera. I did a video of tearing it down. Not sure if I did a video of taking pictures with it though. So, do you pronounce your name Pico? Because it's like the uh, the Pico symbol. Anyway, so how do I feel about tea? Well, I love tea, and why my some of my teeth are so like discolored. So I've had to kind of stop drinking tea. Because ever since I was a little kid, I would drink a lot of tea and hot chocolate and stuff like that. And so I, I've never been much of a soda person, but I like older types of drinks, I guess you could say. And, um, especially sweet tea. Sometimes sweet tea is nice. 
But that's more of an American thing from what I hear. And so that's one thing that I've kind of... That's why my teeth aren't quite the whitest, you know. Oh, moo. Okay. I only know that symbol being used for like a picofarad and stuff like that, or microfarad or whatever. You guys also have Jaffa Cakes in the UK, so you have a lot of stuff that's really nice. Although your politics aren't that great. No politics are right that great, though. Every country has their bad side. But at the very least in the US, you can still say a lot of shit without being put behind bars. That is nice. That is nice. I've heard a lot of heard a lot of news reports about people um, getting in trouble for like hate speech and stuff like that over there, and like, that's that's not that great. Whatever happened to like uh, the whole idea of words won't hurt you? You know what I mean? I mean, I get a lot of hate all the time. I don't, I don't get that. Well, that, I, that's simplification. I personally don't give a shit about whenever I get insults, but for some reason I found that they started seeping into my dreams, ruining my lucid dreams. Because, like, sometimes I'll have a dream or I'm answering YouTube comments, and in the dream, my, like, defenses against insults aren't that great. So that's a very weird, like, edge case where it does kind of affect me, but still, it's Eh, you just gotta deal with it. That's how the world is. Okay, yeah, so, um, Moo says, for what you say are okay, just not legal consequences. I can, like, yeah, there should still be social consequences of what you say, but you shouldn't be put in jail for saying that there's only two genders, you know, like. a good amount of UK viewers. Oh. It's like Chinese. I don't know Chinese. So well. You know, speaking of the UK, I really wish Fred Dibna was still alive. He seemed like a really cool person. I'm not sure about that. It looks like that one's been eaten through. Is that? There we go. There we go. You can see right through it. Rob Barlow, the world is going insane. Yes, it is. The world is definitely going insane. Actually, you know what, though? To be honest, a lot of it is just overhyped from the uh, like the death throes of the news media because in order in order to compete with the clickbaity articles on the internet, they have to become clickbaity articles wherever else they are, and so it's just pain in the butt.
So I think a lot of the problems actually stem a lot from just how things are reported and overhyped and how much importance we put on things that shouldn't actually be important. Like, no offense, I don't give a shit about school shootings. And you shouldn't either, unless they're in your county. Because if we do, then we just popularize it. Oh, the Japanese, oh, Genki desu ka, right? Genki desu. So that's the problem with me about learning languages. Well, in general, I tend to I pick something up. I work on it a little bit until I can learn something. But then whenever it starts getting difficult for my mind to really keep up and I start losing interest, I, instead of getting burnt out, I put it on a shelf and go to something else. So with languages, I go from languages back and forth. And so I don't get too burnt out on any single thing. Well, here recently, I've kind of been more on like German learning than Japanese. And so... I've been keeping up with uh, learning the hiragana or katakana, and so they're not as fresh in my mind. Sorry, I'm just kind of catching up on the, the chat. Have you thought about rust removal with a molasses tank? No. Huh. Speaking of heights, I was, um, I was on top of one of those poles the other day trying to cut some of the, 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 the branches because they're kind of in the way. And... My ladder doesn't go all the way to the top, so I had to kind of like climb the rest of the way and like, might have to figure that out when I'm going to be cutting the top of it. There's a lot of comments all of a sudden. I'm trying to keep up because that kind of makes it fun, you know. Oh, i got to air off my computer because there's so much junk on it. Thank you very much, Steve. I would like to do more live streams, I think. Although it's always tempting fate, because you don't want to have a PewDiePie moment. And, like, as soon as I hit a live stream, like, I am just so tempted to say so many things that would trigger so many people. But I know I shouldn't. you guys see that the video I believe it was from uh, Vice or something like that and it was uploaded a couple days ago or whatever and it's just like propaganda against Poland so much it's weird well not weird like kind of you kind of expect it from them but but even for them it's like do you really believe that but I would like to hear you guys opinion on that video do you, like uh, is it does it seem like propaganda to you because it's some it seemed like propaganda to me All right, I am annoyed by this very small chat window. It only shows like three or four chat at a, at a 
at a time. I wonder how they, how people actually get like the chat like um like on their video. Oh, you can have secondary clients. Interesting. So that's what I said. This is just an experiment. It's uh just an experiment. We'll see where it goes. Well, basically, I'll give you a summary of the, of the video. It, it, it's like Poland's a totalitarian nation for not doing what the other totalitarian nations want. Well, they're not actually saying that, but it's like they're trying to paint Russia and the EU as like these free democratic countries and then saying that Poland is being taken over by totalitarian. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Russia, the U.S., and Europe. Uh, uh, not Europe. Sorry. Sorry. That was a bad mistake. Europe is not the EU. Russia, the EU, and the United States are some of the most, like, authoritarian countries ever. Because, like, well, like, yeah, I just, like, and when a company, and, when, and it's funny, whenever a country tries to just, like, you know, do their own thing, which I don't follow the politics too much in Poland, but it seems like they're kind of like Switzerland. They're kind of, they're not just going along with everything. And, um, it's funny whenever you try to be free, that's whenever they call you an authoritarian Nazi or whatever. Pop out chat. Oh, oh my God. You can close the window and then pop it out. Oh, oh yes. So nice. I can actually like see the chat in a bigger window now. Yes. Wow. Um, I hope to finish it before, well, I hope to finish it before fall, really. But we'll see how that goes. Wait, no, no. Not before fall. Before, before fall really hits. You know, because like the first two-thirds of fall actually are pretty hot still. Last board from No Nails. So, I'm going to go get another load of wood and I'll be right back. Got some long ones here, so that's good. Be right back. I need to get some water so I can wash my hands off, so they're not so dirty.
All right. Let's see if you guys commented. Oh, I'm not going back far enough. There's a lot of oh shit. There's a lot of comments. <laughs> The cat is inside because it's hot outside and she's lazy. Jot Dot said, probably should not talk about politics on live streaming. Just saying, probably shouldn't, but since when do I follow the rules? Okay, no. I follow the rules a lot. When do I follow the social rules? There we go. Chandler Johnson said to go to SpaceX headquarters in California the next time I'm in, in California. It's quite a ways away from San Francisco. It's in Los Angeles, just FYI. Best chair ever. So this chair is like from the 1910s, I believe. Very right, nice. I, I have a video about the chair, by the way. The rupert is not as good when it's hot. It's really warm out here. I need some unseed oil. I do agree, um, but there's some structural issues with the chair, so I probably want to add those, uh, like fix those before I put linseed oil on it. Moo said, I love how the moment Ren leaves this chat. Goes 100% shit posting. Oh, this entire thing is shit posting, by the way. You gotta love shit posting. It's great. You guys are going faster than I can scroll. Well, okay, scroll and read. If you put root beer in a square glass, do you get beer? Oh my god! Yes, I love how stupid that is. No, I do want to read. I, I read all the comments in general, and so I want to read all the chat comments. Well, most of them, at least, some of them are shit. But whatever. See, the thing is, just like filtering out the garbage. It's the same with dumpster diving. Same with dumpster diving. It is it as it is for listening to your view, viewers. Like I don't know, a good majority would just be shit that you could just like kind of whatever, just throw the side. But there'll be a, like nice ones, like these boards. Well, not those ones. These boards. Yeah. James Poroy. Is that how you pronounce your name? Poroy? Sorry if you already said this, but are you going to insulate and wire your workshop? Well, I am actually thinking about doing knob and tube wiring and not have it connected to the grid. So it'll be off grid. It'll be have solar panels on the top, which actually, if you look at the design, the south facing section will be bigger and at the perfect angle for solar panels. And I'm hoping to use some of my Nissan Leaf cells to make a battery bank. So Think about 48 volts in private inverter, but I think I'd, I really like to have like an old fashioned knob and tube wiring on it. Man, there's like so much shit on my computer.
I am almost done. There we go. All caught up. How I moved these was the barrel, um, the bare barrel trailer. And then I cut a piece of string as far as I can reach, lay it across, and I do that three times. Put the boards on top, tie them up, and then I have a, I have like a little bundle of wood. Then when I get home, I can just pop it out, throw it on the ground, and go get some more. That looks like a good piece. Look at that. So nice. I should have like a chair stream sometime. Jeff Jones guesses I'm five foot eleven. I'm not five foot eleven. I'm five foot like six and a half. Mark, uh, I think it was like a was it a little less than one hundred and seventy mil uh, centimeters or what? Yeah, whatever it is. It was different. So the problem is, whenever whenever you measure in the morning and whenever you measure in the in the evening, your height changes due to your spi uh, spinal compression or whatever your spinal whatever. I didn't even see this thing turn into a um, entire like boat thing. Seven foot four. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Five foot eight. Chris Brinzel is closer. Michael Kessler. Five foot. And now you're all just saying the, the number that I said. Not how that works.
Oh, only one now. Look at that. What I'm thinking is at the end of the live stream, we can go around the other side of the house and spray these off and uh, watch them clean up. That'll be it for the live stream. Oh, and you guys are commenting a lot. Well, when you're talking about pants size, um, and not like, you mean like trousers, right? And let's come on. I guess you're weird. I actually wear like kid size jeans because in the U.S., everyone is so fucking fat that you have to wear the kid sizes to have any like reasonable small size of, um, of uh, jeans, which is really disgusting. Like, I know a lot of people. Like, there's the like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't shame anyone for being fat, but don't go saying that fat is beautiful or fat is healthy. I mean, let's let's be real here. Looks disgusting. And I'm talking about like obese, like several hundred pounds. Being a little overweight is fine, but. Like, I don't know, like, like when you look so big that you can't, um, you, feel like you can't really walk, it's kind of a problem. It wasn't it like Cosmopolitan or whatever that just had a, like a, a fat model on it, on the cover? Sure. I don't know my glasses prescription. I'm asking all these things that I don't pay attention to. I believe my right eye is worse than my left eye. I think this building had some water damage at some point. Mr. Cohagen said, what's wrong with curves though? Well, I mean, skinny people have curves. But, like, why does, why does curves only mean fat? That's, that's odd. Oh, I really, I really trigger the SJWs, especially because I'm trans or whatever, so, oh, on my second channel, they have such a fit sometimes, it's funny.
I don't understand why there's a nail in the middle of it. That's not how you do floorboards. Battery's dying. Shit. Be right back. I think I have a solution. 